All right, welcome everyone to a new episode of the Full Body Science Applied series. In this video, we're gonna be hitting the fifth and final full body workout of the week and our new high frequency full body split. And as always, if this split doesn't make much sense to you, I'll link a few videos in the description box below that'll get you up to speed. And today, even though we're hitting the full body, we're gonna be focusing primarily on the delts by hitting our shoulders earlier in the workout and with slightly more volume. So we're kicking things off with three sets of six reps on the barbell overhead press. Now, oddly enough, despite being one of the single best measures of upper body strength, in my opinion, the OHP has recently come under scrutiny with some people going so far as to say it's simply not a good exercise for developing the shoulders. I think the reasoning here is that because it's such a front delt dominant movement and your front delts already get plenty of activation from any horizontal pressing in your routine, including a vertical press is pretty much redundant. And while I can see where that's coming from, and I do think bodybuilders tend to overemphasize the front delts, this isn't an opinion that I personally share. First of all, even though the front delts will be carrying most of the load, it isn't like the lateral and rear heads just completely turn off and go to sleep while vertical pressing. Just look at this figure from Sater Backen and colleagues. In the standing barbell press, even though the front delts were the most active, you're still seeing significant activation of the side delts and some activation of the rear delts as well. Also from a strength perspective, I do see a vertical press as one of the few fundamental movement patterns that should be integrated into any complete training program to prevent overuse injury and to develop raw strength in the frontal plane. Now, it doesn't need to be a barbell press. You can use dumbbells if you find them to be more comfortable. The main point is that prioritizing some kind of vertical press on a shoulder focused day is a good idea. So one of the things I've been focusing on lately is thinking about pushing through the outside of my hands rather than the insides. I think this does two things. First, it prevents my grip from gradually slipping out. And second, it helps me prioritize shoulder abduction. So you can think of it like this. If you were to do a set of dumbbell shoulder press while pressing the dumbbells up and out, it would be a lot harder than pressing them up and in. So by placing the brunt of the force on the outside of my palms, I'm able to cue for the same basic movement pattern. Now, obviously the bar is fixed, so my hands won't actually move in like they would with dumbbells, but I still find this cue helps my shoulders function in their strongest position throughout the range of motion. Now, the second thing I've been focusing on is keeping my elbows tucked at about a 45 degree angle at the bottom, but then I'll flare them out a bit more as the bar clears my face. And I find this helps me get the bar back over the shoulder joint, reducing the moment arm between the load and the joint and making the lift more efficient overall. Now, in terms of progression, one thing I like to do here is start with three sets of six and then simply add one set each week until you get to five sets of six with the same weight in week three. And then in week four, go back to three sets of six again, but now you'll add some weight. And I like this progression scheme for OHP in particular because a lot of people hit a wall with OHP strength progression as they get more advanced, meaning there will come a point where realistically adding some weight week to week or even adding just one rep week to week just won't be feasible anymore. So adding sets to accumulate volume first is a great workaround to keep driving strength forward. All right, we've got a nice few exercises to get through in this workout, so I'm gonna move a bit more quickly from here forward. Um, so after that, we're moving on to three sets of 15 reps on the dumbbell lateral raise. Now, one thing I've been really emphasizing in this series so far is the importance of managing fatigue throughout the week. This is especially important on a high frequency full body split where you're hitting some of the same muscles on consecutive training days. Now, one consideration we've discussed a lot is not taking too many sets all the way to failure and moderating your effort in the gym, especially when you first start a high frequency protocol. But another equally important consideration is exercise selection and distribution. Exercises that load more in a stretched position tend to cause more muscle damage, while exercises that load more in the contracted position tend to cause less muscle damage. In our last workout, we did the cable lateral raise, which applies a high level of tension in both the stretched position at the bottom and in the contracted position at the top. So in this workout, we're doing the dumbbell lateral raise instead, where tension is practically zero in the stretched position, but maximal in the contracted position at the top. Now, this isn't something to overthink, and it probably doesn't make a huge difference for an exercise like a lateral raise. But as a general principle, I do think we can push an exercise like a dumbbell lateral raise much closer to failure without seeing as much fatigue, and we can apply that same general principle to other exercises. And if you're interested in some more tips on the lateral raise in general, I'll link my Technique Tuesday video down below instead of covering those details again here. All right, up next, we're doing three sets of 12 on the seated cable row. Now, this is one of my favorite so-called mind-muscle connection-based movements for the back because it's so easy easy to alter the movement to be more trap dominant or more lat dominant, depending on what you're trying to target specifically. Personally, I've been doing these more as a lat dominant row where I'm thinking about pulling my elbows primarily down while keeping them tucked into my sides. Now, you might have to drop the weight back a bit, but you'll feel a crazy lat contraction doing them this way. I also like to lean a bit forward during the eccentric to get a bit more of a stretch on the lats, but you don't need to lean forward. I know a lot of people prefer to stay more upright and that'll work fine as well. It just might be a bit harder to get that maximum stretch on the lats. 
And then if you did want to get the mid traps a bit more involved, you'd simply have to adjust the cueing to think about driving your elbows back and squeezing your shoulder blades together at the top. Okay, up next, we're doing three sets of 12 on the lying leg curl. And other than calves, this is actually gonna be our only leg exercise for this workout. So no direct quad or glute work this day. They've already got plenty of volume from the other four full body days. Now you could swap the leg curls for glute ham raises if you wanted to squeeze in a bit more glute volume. But because we hit deadlifts just yesterday on day four, you will wanna be cautious and make sure your posterior chain is feeling recovered if you do decide to make that swap. Now, one mistake I see a lot of people make with the leg curl is allowing the pads to pop up off the ankles, especially toward the top of the curl. And if you find this happening, it means you're losing control of the weight and using momentum to jack the weight up rather than consciously squeezing your hamstrings to press the pads firmly against your ankles throughout the range of motion. If this helps, you can think about letting every other muscle in your legs, including your calves, go completely loose and direct your attention entirely to the hamstrings. If you do this right, you'll gradually apply pressure to the pads throughout the positive rather than just heaving the weight up. And you should feel your hamstrings work in a way that they probably never have before on this exercise. All right, after that, we're moving on to three sets of 12 reps on the dumbbell concentration curl. And similar to the leg curl, here we're keeping our elbow joint pinned up against our leg and focusing on squeezing our bicep to move the weight. I'm also focusing on using both primary functions of the bicep here elbow flexion and supination. So at the bottom, I'm holding the dumbbell with a neutral grip and then supinating by driving through my pinky so my palm faces upward at the top. Also consciously take more of a loose grip to make sure my bicep is in fact doing the work and my forearms aren't taking over. Okay, after that, we're doing four sets of 15 on the cable crunch. This is one of the few exercises where you do wanna focus on rounding your lower back as you go through the range of motion. After all, spinal flexion is the primary function of the rectus abdominis. So you wanna keep your shoulders and arms as locked into place as you comfortably can so that the only movement is being initiated from the six pack itself. And remember, you're not just bending forward at the hips. Think of squeezing your abs together like a sponge or an accordion. And next we're moving on to hit some calves. So we're doing four sets of 15 reps on the seated calf raise. Now, I like to include both a bent leg option like these and a straight leg option like we did back on day three, just for variation throughout the week and because they likely emphasize slightly different calf muscles. And on day three, we did four sets of eight to create more of a mechanical tension driven stimulus. So today we're doing higher reps to emphasize the metabolic stress pathway more. And a cue I've been using lately here is to think about rolling back and forth on the balls of my feet. I find some people get too fixated on simply just going up onto their tippy toes rather than thinking about what the calf is actually doing, which is plantar flexing the ankle. And as always, I'm using a nice pause at the bottom to help dissipate any elastic reflex and then finishing each rep with a strong squeeze at the top. And finally, we're gonna finish off this workout and the full week of training with two all-out sets of push-ups for as many reps as possible. And I like finishing off the week with a max effort set like this because you get to dig deep and really challenge yourself. And because there's gonna be a day or two of complete rest after this workout, you don't really need to worry quite as much about having the fatigue interfere with your next day training performance. But even though these are AMRAP sets, it's still important to use proper form with good control. And I standardize my reps by ensuring that my nose, chest, and stomach all touch the floor on each and every rep. Now, your rep count is obviously gonna be lower on the second set due to fatigue, but the key here is to try to add one rep to both sets throughout the rest of the program. And before we go, I'm gonna put a quick tally of the total weekly volumes we hit for each body part up here on the screen, in case you wanna adjust any of the numbers up or down for any weak points you're trying to give a bit more focus. Remember that one of the main advantages of full body training is simply being able to spread out your weekly volume in a way that maximizes performance and recovery. And that's gonna conclude this full body portion of the Science Applied series. And from here, I'm gonna start making some more videos about my new power building approach. So the new program alternates between a full body week and an upper lower week. So it'll be a nice switch up for you guys. And I think you're really gonna enjoy it. And as always, if you guys are interested in having all the information from this series put together into a complete 10 week training program with all the sets, reps, technique cues, and progression schemes all laid out for you, you can pick up my high frequency full body program over on jeffnipper.com. And I'll put a button to that over here next to my head. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this series. I think this will probably go down as my personal favorite split that I've run so far here on the channel. Um, so don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.